You bought the car, now add the lifestyle option. The BMW Car Club of America, the largest single mark car club in the world, is where you can experience every amazing aspect of the BMW lifestyle. And if you're an active BMW owner, the club membership more than pays for itself within the span of a year with discounts like 15% off the BMW Performance Center programs and parts and service discounts from participating dealers. As a member, you'll also receive the award-winning Roundel Magazine and the new Bimmer Life Magazine. Join now at bmwcca.org. Good evening, race fans, and welcome back to the BMW Car Club of America iRacing Series. Tonight, we visit the virtual road Atlanta. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's broadcast, whether you're watching along on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or Twitter. I'm Taylor Burris, and joining me in the booth is my colleague, Strix Pulse of Tricks, and our producer, Ryan Bauer, is down in the virtual production trailer powered by Top Flight Computers. Now, Strix, this track is by far a pinnacle of sports car and endurance racing. Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, home of the Petit Le Mans. I mean, you can't get any better than this track. And of course, with BMW's historic heritage here at this track, this is probably going to be a favorite for the BMW drivers here tonight. 
I cannot argue with that. Road Atlanta is a legendary circuit with its famous S's going straight down, uh, straight down probably a hill that in most circumstances on TV or in live streams like this, you don't really get a sense of just how humongous that elevation change is. And it's not even just on uh, after the first turn going up the hill and then down the S's, but also uh, coming back onto the start finish line. You have that huge hill you got to climb and then descend into the final corner. It is a very daunting track, a very challenging track, but also incredibly fun to drive no matter the skill level. Certainly is, and of course, the people here at BMW are very excited to be here because last time a BMW was on this track, they won the Petit Le Mans here at 2020 with the BMW RLL racing team. So a great job for them, and I'm pretty sure they're going to be looking forward to two 20-minute races here tonight. As we are currently finishing up qualifying right now, looking at the grid, Christopher Hill in that number one is currently sitting on the front row right now with a 126.738. And not too far behind is the 44 of Kurt Poulter with a 126.772. So very tight inside the top three with qualifying. A great show for us here tonight. Absolutely. And if, if we look a little bit further down the order too, we see a number three, Matt Kalish with a 126.79. And then behind him, is Adam Pohl with a 126.99. And this is an incredibly close top five here. Uh, these drivers are obviously, uh, especially at the top, are very familiar with this course here in Brosalton, Georgia. And Brazelton, Georgia is, of course, not too far outside of Atlanta. If we take a look here at the track right now as we zoomed in from the Google Earth, and as you can see, the track and all the different elevation changes that these drivers will have to face, especially the S's when you come up through turns three all the way to turn number five. I mean, we've seen out roller coasters and everything, but this is one roller coaster that these drivers are going to have a blast driving in 12 turns, 2.5, 2.54 miles. This track will definitely test the limits of these drivers here tonight. 100%. It is a quite a long course with a very long straight near the back end of it. And it's going to reward those drivers who are able to get corner exit speed and maximize that speed onto the straights. In addition to that, you're also going to have to be uh, quite, uh, what's the word, technical. You have to technically sound in uh, this race because there are a lot of uh, switchback chicane kind of corners, uh, a lot of elevation change, and... Um, uh, what's it called? The camber, a lot of camber in the corners as well. So uh, learning the track's elevation changes, learning every nook and cranny about this track is going to, you know, uh, bring your advantage up to an extreme level. It certainly is. And a lot of these drivers are looking forward to this as they are just now finishing up qualifying. Peter Eastman in the 488, his BMW currently sitting in ninth position, is coming up on his final lap out of turn number 11 through the high speed corner of turn number 12 across the start finish line. And he does not improve his time. He's actually going to be right there as he comes to a stop. Taking a look at the field right now, a couple of other drivers who have yet to take time. Ismael Sierra in his number 19 BMW M4 GT4. Currently starting, looks like to be his first lap here. Not much time left on the clock, though. He might not have enough time even to get his first lap in today. Yeah, you got to make sure you're on top of your schedule and uh, getting out on track on time. But even then, uh, some drivers are capable of, you know, starting from the back of the grid and moving their way back up. We've seen it a lot in various motorsport events. Uh, and the fighting here in this series is actually pretty good. A lot of these drivers are very good at what they do. They're, some of them might be new to sim racing in general, but they still are able to transfer their knowledge of uh, their cars on track and bring it to the sim racing world. So um, Ismail uh, Sierra might be at a bit of a disadvantage, uh, but you can't exactly count him out uh, not being able to finish his qualifying time. No, you certainly cannot. And as the clock continues to wind down here, and I believe we have just did it. So that means we are now going to go to your starting grid. 
And of course, the BMW Car Club of America iRacing Series is brought to you by TireRack.com. Over 2.7 million square feet of distribution centers, 27 major tire brands, and 60 wheel brands, most available to deliver by next business day. Competitive pricing, industry trusted reviews, and extensive customer service. TireRack.com, America's leading performance tire and wheel source. Starting on the front row, of course, from the San Diego region is Christopher Hill. In second place, from the Buckeye chapter, we'll find Kurt Poulter. In third place, from the New York chapter, Matt Kalish. And starting in the fourth position, we will find Adam Pohl. Adam Pohl, of course, is from the Trillium chapter. In fifth place, we will find Chris Braun from the Boston chapter, followed by Rafael Espinala, in the, also from the Boston chapter. Seventh place will be Dave Hines from the Allegheny chapter, and Evan Levine from the Tar Heel chapter starts eighth. Ninth position will be from Peter Eastman from the New Jersey chapter, and rounding out your top ten, Enrique Williams from the Tar Heel chapter. Going down to 11th position in the 28 car, Tyler Perry from the Roadrunner chapter of the BMW CCA. Moving down the order, we have in 12th, Dave Cole from the Bluegrass Bimmers chapter. I like that name. Brooks Ezel in 13th is uh, from the Tar Heel chapter. And then Matthew Kogan in 14th from San Diego chapter. Cameron Evans in the 176 starts 15th from the Tejas chapter. Yakov Bilak from Trillium Chapter up in Canada in 16th. In 17th, we see Charlie Copper from the Buckeye Chapter. Paul Wigboldy in 18th position on the grid from the Los Angeles Chapter. And from the New York Chapter, we have Ismail Sierra in 19th in, believe it or not, car 19. And in the 20th position in the 888 is Jim Anderson from the Trillium Chapter. So 20 cars here tonight. Once again, here is your track facts here for the preview. We are in Brazelton, USA, in Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. And here at the Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, of course, this track is 12 turns, 2.54 miles. Of course, right now in sim time, it's about 8.21 in the morning. And of course, it is iRacing Day of May 15th, 2020. Winds are coming out of the northeast with clear skies at 6 miles an hour, and it's a very cool morning here in Georgia. 65 degrees with a track temp of 67 degrees. Humidity is about 55%, so a nice little day here in Georgia. As the pace truck will lead them around through the track, Strix, any final thoughts before we turn them loose here for 20 minutes? Absolutely. I'm very excited to see uh, what these drivers have here to offer for us this week. Uh, at last event, Christopher Hill uh, managed to finish very high in both the heat and in the uh, feature race. We saw him finish first in the heat and then uh, finishing second in the uh, second race. And you know there are a lot of other uh, a lot of other drivers that we're probably going to be take, keeping an eye on drivers who we've seen doing very well at the last event. So drivers like Adam Pohl, Ismail Sierra actually did really well last uh, last race too, finishing uh, somewhere around the top five in the in the feature. And um, I think there was one other person in here who was doing really well, but I can't see him. Well, yeah. I don't think he's here today. We got Kurt Poulter as well, who has had a strong run, and Dave Oh, that's Hines. true, yeah. Yep, that guy. <laughs> well, these drivers <laughs> are about to turn loose here for 20 minutes or 14 laps around Michelin Raceway Road in Atlanta. Christopher Hill, Kurt Poulter on the front row as the pay truck is leading them down the back straightaway and making their way to turn nine before they head down the hill into the turn 10A, 10B complex. And Strix, we're going to see a lot of is issues through this corner right here because there's a very technical corner. If you get side by side, it is very difficult and easy to make contact and your car can easily go around if you hit the curve at the wrong time. That's absolutely true, Taylor. You know, this uh, this course uh, in the back straight leads up to a very tight chicane. It's a tight left-hander and then a tight right-hander going up the hill, then down the hill again. It is going to test these drivers. And it uh, certainly is. It certainly is. That's the green flag is out, and we are underway for race number one at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta for the BMW Car Club iRacing Series as they go into turn number one. Christopher Hill takes the lead over Kurt Poulter with Matt Kalish sitting in third position. Adam Poe drops back to the fourth position. Rounding out your top five is Chris Braun in that number 17 as they make their way up to turn number three. Through the S's for the first time. Single file. No one
Bombers really pushing the effort right now as they work their way down through the exits, heading up to turn number five. Everybody mining their P's and Q's and giving space as they head now into turn five for the first time. Uh, one thing to note, of course, uh, with the BMW CCA iRacing series is that they have this rule called the brown zone rule. And essentially what it means is on the first lap for the first few handful of corners, you are not allowed to make any aggressive passing maneuvers. So you're not allowed to dive bomb or do anything like that, make really ridiculously dangerous passes. But beyond that zone, which they are now as they head on to the back, uh, as they head on towards the back straight, you're going to see a little more interesting maneuvers over here. You're going to see a little bit more aggression, and you're going to see these drivers trying to climb up the ranks as fast as they can before the rank and file spreads out. It certainly is. So far, it's starting to spread out just a little bit. Your top five is side by side as we see Chris Braun look to the inside of Adam Pohl, but couldn't quite make it work. Now he'll try the crossover once again, but can't get to the inside just yet as they come out of turn 10 and 11 and now make their way through the high speed of turn number 12 to complete lap number one here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. And Chris Hill has pulled it out to an eight tenths of a second lead at the battle for second. Kurt Poulter and Matt Kalish make oh, no. contact and Kurt Poulter makes contact contact to the tire barriers that could be looked at and reviewed as these drivers continue on their way as Matt Kalish drops all the way back and continues in second place. Yeah, that's very unfortunate contact uh, between Kurt Poulter and uh, Matt Kalish. Very, very unfortunate indeed. From what I can see here, it seems as though uh, Matt Kalish might have gone a little bit wide and um, Kurt Poulter might, have been give, uh, might not have given him quite enough room and uh, unfortunately, uh, it seems as though Matt Kalish was given the black, fa uh, black flag. He was given uh, a penalty for that uh, contact, unfortunately. He will have to come down and serve that penalty here tonight in order due to the fact of the contact that he made with Kurt Poulter. Meanwhile, there has been some changes for second and third with that penalty that Matt Kalish has to serve. That will now move Adam Pohl up to second, Chris Braun in third, and those two have been battling out since they dropped the green flag, even though we're on lap number two. Here as they dive it down into turn number 10. They are battling very hard here as they come through turn 10A and 10B. Up the hill, they'll go underneath the Suzuki Bridge and down it through turn 11. And they are nose to tail as they come through turn 12 as Matt Kalish will come down pit road to serve his penalty. As they come down to the start-finish line, many of these drivers are very close. The top five is still up for grabs, but Chris Hill has been running away with the lead with an interval of almost a second or more from what I can see on my uh, little timing, uh, timing sheet here. Uh, it's a very wide gap, actually. Um, I think it's, it's actually up to about 15 seconds? No, about 3.2, like point, so divide that by five. Oh, there it is, okay. Yeah, something's up with my uh, ticker here, but um, you know, Chris Hill has been running away with this race and everybody else has been trying to fight for the scraps, so this will be an interesting race developing here. It certainly is, as the battle for second will still rage on. It is now a three-car battle for second. You have Adam Pohl in the 11, you have Chris Braun in the 17, and Rafael Espana in the fourth position in that number 82. Those three cars battling out pretty hard as Evan Levine sits in fifth. He's about 1.3 seconds back, but he has Dave Hines and Peter Eastman battling it with him as they go down the back straightaway. And utilizing the slipstream, we will see some drivers, such as Hines with Levine, as well as Chris Braun and Adam Pohl, who are now making it into turn 10. Yeah, with that back straight, you know, a lot of these drivers are definitely going to be utilizing that slipstream, trying to get alongside the cars ahead of them, or at least close the gap. Um, but there are other opportunities on this course to be able to make up that gap as well as we come through the start-finish line uh, with Dave Hines and head up the hill through turn one and into the chicanes here. Very close battle between uh, Hines and Evan Levine developing uh, as they come down into the chicane area of the track. They certainly are as they go through the S's. Evan Levine currently holds fifth position in that 118 BMW M4 with David with Dave Hines now right on his bumper as they come up through turn five. Turn five is actually probably one of the most trickiest corners because of that off camber. I mean, we've seen even the biggest names in sports car racing lose control of their race car through that section of the course. It's that difficult. And I've seen plenty of incidents on the IA Racing Service where we kind of see what we call the big one in oval racing happen in turn number five there 
there in any form of motor racing we have on the service. But now they come out of turn number seven, or turn number eight, down the back straightaway, and Dave Hines, Evan Levine doing a great job of battling cleanly, but yet very competitive battle. Yep, uh, absolutely clean battle up there as we head on up to uh, the battle between Adam Pohl and Chris Braun. The 17 car and the 11 car heading up the hill and going down the hill now, heading into the final corner. These drivers are doing a fantastic job trying to keep it clean uh, for the most part here. Uh, and Chris Braun and um, uh, Adam Pohl are no strangers to um, no strangers to each other. They've battled it out on uh, on Road America at the last event, and they're doing the same thing here. And they're doing they're just focused on making their lap times as fast as possible, catching up to the other person ahead of them, and trying to make that pass. Well, right now, those two battling is not helping them catch up to Chris Hill. Right now, Christopher Hill has picked it up to about a 4.2 second lead over Adam Cole. Looking at lap times right now, Christopher Hill is actually running about five tenths of a second faster than Adam Cole and Chris Braun. His last lap was 126.434 compared to the next fastest car, which has to go to Chris Braun with a 126.798. So it's a very big gap as far as with the times right now. But we could see any Anything is happening. We've seen Chris Hill make some mistakes to where we saw someone else take home the checkered flag here tonight. That's absolutely true, Taylor. These drivers, you know, really anything can be up for grabs here. It's it's entirely possible that Chris Hill could make a pretty big mistake up in the lead. As good a driver as he is, no driver is a robot. Everybody, there's nobody's perfect here. As we see, oh no, it's Chris Braun. Uh, sorry, Adam Pohl goes a little bit wide into turn 10A. And uh, it seems as though Chris Braun is able to take advantage of that, of that mistake from Adam Pohl. And now Chris Braun has finally made the proper pass, heading down into the turn one. Uh, fantastic job from uh, Chris Braun being able to capitalize on that mistake as now Adam Pohl is under attack by Rafael Espinal. Yes, indeed, as we're on board with Rafael Espinal as they go down through turn number three, and you can see right outside his mirror, there is the second and third position. A chance for a podium as they go through the S's, climbing back up through turn number five, and Dave Hines, well, he's caught up to these three other drivers now. It's now a four-car battle for second place up through turn five before they get to the short shoot of turn number six. They're going to have to make sure that they're not battling with each other too hard because we've also got Evan Levine and Peter Eastman both looking at that pack saying, yes, please battle each other. They want a piece of that action. So these drivers up front, uh, Rafael Espinal, Adam Pohl, and Chris Braun, they're going to have to pick their punches accurately, make them wisely to make sure that the drivers behind them don't catch up and get them a piece of the pie as well as they are definitely trying to pick their way through up through the field right now it is still going to be chris hill with a 5.9 second lead over chris braun and adam pole who have been battling but now have some newcomers with rafael espinal and dave hind and evan levine peter eastman is a little bit further back about 2.5 seconds back from this battle but still is starting to close into this battle where we could have a six car or actually no ace Six car battle for this second position here and a great job. But let's go a little further back to the field. Let's get spot, shine the spotlight on a couple of drivers. We actually have a battle for the 10th position right now between the number 176 of Cameron Evans as well as the number 50 of Enrique Williams. These two have been battling for the past couple of laps and putting on a great show as they dive into turn number one. And right now, Cameron Evans at 176 doing a great job of holding off and holding to that 10th position as they come up to turn number three. Absolutely, Enrique Williams just under a second behind him, but he has more than enough opportunity to be able to catch up. He might just be out of the slipstream for, for now, but if he's able to uh, emphasize his corner exits and get as much speed onto the straight as possible, he might be able to catch up to the 176, be able to get into that slipstream and catch up to try and make the pass there. He's certainly going to try to do that to break into the top 10 before we get to the halfway point, which we have just about crossed right now. 10 minutes left to go. Meanwhile, battle for the fifth fourth position. Dave Hunt, Rafael Espinal are going side by side into turn number 10. Rafael to the inside. Dave Hines to the outside. Now Hines will have the inside advantage as they come out of turn 10B, but it's going to be Rafael holding on for that fourth position as they come out of turn 11 through turn 12. 
That was a fantastic racing maneuver from Rafael Espinal. A fantastic job. He picked his line, stayed on the inside, and got it done before Dave Hines was even able to give an answer for him. That was a, a fantastic quick pass with no opportunity for answer, but Dave Hines is right on the tail. He could answer later on within this lap. He certainly can, and with those two battling, that allowed drivers such as Chris Braun and Adam Pohl to pull away just a little bit by about one and a half seconds, but now with those two not battling, that's now going to bring the gap a little bit closer to where these four drivers will battle once again here, as we have nine minutes left to go on the clock as they dive it into turn number six and seven. We see Chris Braun coming out of turn number seven with Adam Pohl right right behind him but that gap is extending uh they've stopped fighting with each other and now chris braun has been able to pull away this and that is especially the case with christopher hill who is now six seconds ahead of chris braun the second place uh who is currently in second place um you know chris hill uh he's shown this exact sort of demeanor uh at last event you know he was able to uh, get the lead and then stay there and then leave with the lead. But um, as I said before, anything can happen and Chris Braun and Adam Pohl are gonna have to stay on their toes and make sure they can try and stay at least close enough to capitalize on any big mistakes that Christopher Hill might make. Certainly indeed right now he is the fastest car on the racetrack running a 126.261 last time by the next fastest car Rafael Espinal, Espinal with a 126.995 so about three tenths of a second difference between the two drivers as the rest of the field is starting to run in the 127s to 128 brackets right now as they climb out of turn number five down the back straightaway. Ooh, Dave Hines with a big shakeup right there was able to gain control of his race car and continue on his way but a very close call for the 57 driver. Dave Hines was managed to keep control of that car. That was pretty impressive, honestly, if I had to say so myself. Coming into one of the most difficult corners in this track that you mentioned before, that it got squirrely off of the curb there, but he managed to gather it up pretty well. That was a fantastic job uh, from Dave Hines as we look at the replay. Yes, indeed. You see on the re your replay right here, Dave Hines gets a little bit loose when he comes out of turn number five. And you see that car just start to wiggle. He hit that curb a little bit too hard, but it was able to gain control of his race car. Let's go check on a certain driver who got involved with a penalty early on. And that is going to go to the 54 of Matt Kalish. He served his penalty. It is now in a battle for the ninth position. He's in battle with Cameron Evans in 10th and Tyler Perry in the ninth position. These three drivers are lined up nose to tail as they come out of turn number 10. You're on board right now with Matt Kalish in that number 54 BMW M4 as he looks to the outside of Cameron Evans, but now tries to bat, fall back just a little bit as they come out of turn 12. Down the front straight away here and with about six and a half minutes to go Cameron's going to try to see if he can break the top 10 in order to help him with a good finish here and uh, one thing I wanted to point out while I was looking at the production feed there I noticed like the camera it, was, it set the gyro just to the horizon so you could see just how emphasized this elevation change is when you're going up Ooh, trouble hill. in front right oh, no. now as we have Cameron Evans around spinning around Tyler Perry that's going to cause a penalty right there for Mr. Evans as Matt Kalish and Enrique Williams once again get into the mix. Here comes Matt Kalish. He'll look to the outside of Cameron Evans. Let's though get a quick replay once we get this battle for the position over with. Kalish will go to the outside and complete the pass. Will Enrique Williams follow suit? No, he's going to stay behind, but let's get a look at that replay and see what happened between Evans and Perry as those three drivers are still battling it out for that ninth position. As here is your replay. As we see, the two drivers are battling. That is Cameron Evans in front right there. And then the white car is also Perry. So they're coming up through the S's right now. And then you'll just see the contact that has happened between them as you're on board with Tyler Perry. Of course, Tyler Perry's doing a great job. Had a great run here tonight, but then here comes Cameron Evans. He'll look to the out inside and then just make contact. It could be a little bit of both driver errors from both parties as Tyler Perry from the Roadrunner chapter goes around in his BMW. And unfortunately, he's going to fall back quite a ways. Currently, right now, he sits in 12th position. 
That's quite an unfortunate event to see there, Taylor. It seemed as though, um, you know, they're just... That corner isn't really much of a passing opportunity. There's a, there isn't a whole lot of room uh, to share between two cars going that... Uh, going two cars wide in that corner. Um, unfortunately, they tried to make it happen, and it didn't work out this time around. Uh, I guess we'll see what the stewards think of that comp of that uh, conflict there. But uh, as we move along, we're going to head right back up to our pole position. Number one, Christopher Hill, currently sitting in first, and he is doing a fantastic job. Oh, we have a little bit of action here. Yep, with that between Chris Braun. Yep, Chris Braun, Adam Pohl back at it once again, battling for second position as Chris Braun will retake that second position away from Adam Pohl as they come out of turn number 12 down through the front straightaway here. And now four minutes left to go on the clock. Dave Hines in the 57, he's still within sight of these two drivers to get on the podium here tonight, but he's going to have to have a little bit of help and try to see if he can reel in the driver as there's trouble. That was a car off that they just passed. I wonder who that could be, as there's a couple of cars who are having some trouble. Jim Matthew, Anderson. Jim, Jim Anderson. Anderson. Jim Anderson having some trouble. Matthew Kogan's out on the racetrack with a blown engine right now, so I have to keep track to see if he's able to make it back to pit road, because here comes the leaders up on Matthew Kogan right now, so hopefully he'll tow that car to remove it off the racing surface as they are approaching him with three minutes left to go, so a lot is coming up and drama and folding. And as he, our race leader, Christopher Hill, is actually catching up to Matthew Kogan. Kogan's going to hold his race line to the inside to let Chris Hill pass on the outside as they come up through the back straightaway through turns nine, approaching turn number 10. And Chris Hill, once again, still remains the race lead with 8.8 .8 seconds as Chris Braun, Adam Pohl trying to see if they can do anything to catch up, but it's going to be a little bit of too little, too late left on the clock now as they approach turn 10. It does seem like they're not going to be able to catch Christopher Hill in the time allotted, but they do have an opportunity to try and scrounge up as many positions as they possibly can. Of course, Chris Braun currently at the best position he could possibly attain unless Christopher Hill makes a huge mistake, but there are two cars behind him eyeing him up, trying to, uh, trying to find a way to catch up and get past him, and that's Adam Pohl and Dave Hines. Dave Hines might actually be make, looking to make a move early here because he is well within striking distance of Adam Pohl in the 11 car. So we'll have to see uh, how this turns out in the next couple of laps. Another driver who is starting to reel into this back pack, or this pack of cars right now is Evan Levine. He has passed Rafael Espinal and now made his way up to the fifth position as he is starting to run down second, third, and fourth as they come out of turn five for turn six. This is some fantastic racing. We're seeing, uh, you know, uh, Rafael Espinal and Evan Levine battling each other while trying to catch up to the pack ahead of them with Dave Hines, Adam Pohl, and Chris Braun. It seems as though Chris Braun might have actually uh, been able to get out of their grasp, out of their slipstream, but Adam Pohl is taking a look to uh, the inside uh, uh, Dave Hines is looking on the inside, going into the outside of the corner of 10A. Let's see if they make it. They do as we try the switch over, but here comes Adam Pohl to the inside as they come out of turn number 10. Through turn 11, they'll go side by side as they come out of turn number 12 here with less than a minute to go. This should be the last lap as we saw Adam Pohl go on two wheels hitting the curve. Now we're going to have three cars, three wide possibly into turn number one. Three wide, they will go. Evan Levine to the inside. He clips the curve. Dave Hines now completes the pass, and here comes Rafael Espinal as well into this mix of cars as they come up through turn number three and still Still sit nose to tail. What a great race. How did they make that happen? That was three wide into turn one. I could never imagine going too wide into that corner. That is such a quick corner to be going into, going uphill. Such an incredible elevation change, and that curve is no help at all. But they made it stick. They made it work, and now there is a huge fight between these three drivers here. This is nuts. It's the battle for the final step of the podium here tonight as Chris Braun has checked out 3.3 seconds as we are about to hit the last lap here time is about to expire and Christopher Hill in the number one we'll go back to that battle here once we have Chris Hill take the checkered flag here he is coming up to turn 10a and 10b for the final time coming up through there underneath the Suzuki bridge he will go 
and Christopher Hill will pick up his second win of the season here tonight as he comes out of turn number 12 and he will win the race number one here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. Now back to that battle for third. It's starting to spread out just a little bit, but we still have a couple of cars trying to come around. Rafael Espinal is going to try to go to the inside of Adam Pohl for fifth position as they come out of there. Rafael will not be able to make the pass as looks like now Evan Levine will actually, or Adam Pohl will get that fifth position as the rest of the field is starting to work their way through. Keep an eye on a couple of battles. Strix, that was amazing on that final lap. That was an absolutely incredible race. I am still floored that they were able to go three wide through turn one and didn't wreck each other. It got a little hairy. There was somebody who hit the curb and their car kind of bounced up in the air a little bit, but they managed to keep it clean and make it through in one piece to battle throughout the rest of the lap. That was bonkers. These drivers are so good at what, they're, what they do, and I cannot tell you how excited I am for the next race to see what else they have to offer. Yes, indeed. As the rest of the field works their way through the start-finish line, we will get ready to give you your finishing results here momentarily. So if that was what race one has, then I cannot wait for race number two as the rest of the field has completed their laps. So we will now go to the finishing order. Christopher Hill from the San Diego chapter. Well, he's car number one. He started P1, and he will finish P1. So a great effort for him tonight for the first race. In second place, you'll find Chris Braun from the Boston chapter, followed by Dave Hines in third from the Allegheny chapter. Evan Levine will come home in fourth in the, from the Tar Heel chapter, followed by Adam Pohl from the Trillium region. Rafael Espinal will come home in the... That's waiting for timing and scoring right now. It's getting a little funky. But Rafael Espinal will actually come home in the fifth position, followed by Adam or act in the sixth position. Peter Eastman will come home in seventh, followed by Kurt Poulter eighth. Ninth goes to Matt Kalish, and Enrique Williams will round out your top ten. And then heading into your top 20 in the 11th position, we have Brooks Ezel from the Tar Heel region, finishing just under a minute behind Chris Hill. We also have the t in the 12th position, Yakov Bilak from the Trillium region. Charlie Copper from the Buckeye chapter of BMW CCA finishes in 13th. The Cameron Evans in the 176 car in 14th from the Tejas BMW CCA chapter. And from the Bluegrass Bimmers chapter, Dave Cole ends up in 15th. In 16th, Tyler Perry from the Roadrunner chapter. In 17th, Matthew Kogan from San Diego chapter. In 18th, the 888 car of Jim Anderson from the Trillium chapter. In 19th, we have Paul Wigboldy in from the Los Angeles chapter. And rounding out your 20 driver field is Ismael Sierra from the New York chapter. And with that, we are going to take a quick commercial break. But don't worry, when we come back, we will bring you the second race here of the BMW Car Club of America iRacing Series live from the virtual Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. You bought the car, now add the lifestyle option. The BMW Car Club of America, the largest single mark car club in the world, is where you can experience every amazing aspect of the BMW lifestyle. And if you're an active BMW owner, the club membership more than pays for itself within the span of a year with discounts like 15% off the BMW Performance Center programs and parts and service discounts from participating dealers. As a member, you'll also receive the award-winning Roundel Magazine and the new Bimmer Life Magazine. Join now at bmwcca.org.
Welcome back to the BMW Car Club of America iRacing Series. It is brought to you by TireRack.com. Over 2.7 million square feet of distribution center space, 27 major tire brands, and 60 wheel brands, most available to deliver by next business day competitive pricing. Industry trusted reviews and extensive customer service support. TireRack.com, America's leading performance tire and wheel source. And also brought to you by Bimmer World, FCP Euro, Grassroots Motorsports, HMS Motorsports, Motion Control Suspension, Off Camber Autosports, PFC Brakes. Redline Synthetic Oil, Sunoco, and VAC Motorsports. Of course, we can't thank all of these sponsors enough for coming on board for the BMW Car Club of America iRacing Series. And you know what? To continue a little bit of the talk of all things BMW, Actually going on this weekend here in Daytona, which is actually my home track located in beautiful Daytona Beach, Florida, the historic racing series will be running their classic 24 hour race at the Daytona International Speedway. And of course, the marquee manufacturer of choice for this year's classic 24 is none other than BMW. So a wide variety of classic BMW race cars will be there at tonight, this weekend's race as they will be racing in their respected classes. So, of course, looking at some of the photos and some of the news and videos that I got to saw Strix, one of the cars that really caught my attention was none other than the BMW M1 Pro Cars that was made famous back in the early 80s that was used not just for sports car and endurance racing, but also as a one-make series for Formula One drivers before they actually kicked off their Formula One races during the 1980 seasons. Man, I gotta say, uh, as a Canadian resident, I am so mad I can't go down to Daytona and go watch that myself. You know, uh, the M1 Pro Car has been like a poster on my wall since I was a kid. It's just a fantastic striking vehicle. You look at that thing and it's just, you, it's an instant classic as soon as you look at it. It's, it's just such a striking vehicle, such a striking like the body design and everything. And not only that, but it was also a very good car too. It was very fun to drive from what I've read about the M1 Pro car. So, um, you know, Anybody who is able to go down to Daytona Beach and watch that, I would absolutely recommend it for my sake. Go down and enjoy it for my sake. <laughs> of course, if you do decide to go down here and enjoy this weekend's races at Daytona International Speedway for the Classic, please be safe and practice social distancing, wear a mask, and also make sure you stay safe and sound. It's going to be a nice, beautiful day down here, weekend in Daytona, nice temperatures, but it's going to be a little bit wet and rainy, so make sure you bring some rain gear when you go. But meanwhile, we are back back up here in Georgia as we continue getting ready for race number two of the BMW Car Club of America iRacing Series. And we should be getting ready for the second race right now. Of course, Chris Hill, Chris Braun, the two Chris's starting on the front row for the second race here tonight. And it makes me wonder, will Chris Braun be able to capitalize and make a better start when we start the race here tonight to try and see if he can find a way to beat Christopher Hill? Well, you know, we saw it last uh, last event. We saw uh, Chris Braun was actually able to take the top spot, I believe, at last event on the feature race. So it's entirely possible that we can see that happen again here. Um, it just it's all just a matter of uh, what the cars behind you are doing, how much battling is going on. Um, I think. You know, uh, many of these drivers might have been taking it easy, just kind of going through the S's, going through the motions for the first lap, might have been taking it a little too easy. Uh, we might see um, the drivers light it up just a little bit more because they are comfortable in their cars, they're comfortable on the track, and they're comfortable with their other drivers. Uh, so it's entirely possible that at the very least, Christopher Hill's lead won't be as long as we saw in last event. This race will certainly be interesting. 
Certainly is. As the clock winds down, we give our drivers here in the BMW Car Club of America iRacing Series an extra warm-up here before we turn them loose for race number two. So they're just finishing up their final laps, and then we will give you the starting lineup for race number two as the clock is now under 10 seconds, and we'll get ready to kick off race number two here for another 20 minutes or 14 laps here, whichever comes first. As the timer has hit zero, we will now give you the starting lineup for race number two. Starting on the front row, it is the Christopher Hill starting in first from the San Diego chapter. Alongside him, as we're waiting for timing and scoring to update, it is going to be none other than Chris Braun in the 17. He's from the Boston chapter. Dave Hines from the Allegheny chapter will be starting in third, followed by Evan Levine from the Tar Heel chapter. He'll start fourth. Starting in fifth from the Trillium chapter, Adam Pohl. Rafael Espinal from the Boston chapter will be starting six, followed by Peter Eastman from the New Jersey chapter. He'll start seventh. Kurt Poulter in the number 44 will, from the Buckeye chapter will start from the eighth position. As we go to ninth position, Matt Kalish from the New York chapter. Rounding out your top 10 from Tar Heel chapter, Enrique Williams. And sitting in 11th position is Brooks Ezel from the Tar Heel chapter of BMW CCA. In 12th, Yakov Bilak from the Trillium region. In 13th place, we have Charlie Copper from the Buckeye region. Cameron Evans from the Tejas chapter in 14th. At 15th, we have Dave Cole in the Bluegrass Bimmers chapter. The Roadrunner chapter, Tyler Perry in 16th. And then heading into 17th, representing the San Diego chapter, Matthew Kogan. In 18th, Jim Anderson in the Trillium uh, chapter. 19th, we have Paul Wigboldy from the Los Angeles chapter. And rounding out your field is Ismael Sierra from the New York chapter in 20th. So pretty much all the chapters here that are covered are from east to west, north to south, and even in Canada. The BMW Car Club of America has it all here. The only thing I would have to say is we need a Flora chapter here in tonight's race. I think that would be a lot more fun and exciting for me. Sorry, I have to show a little bit of favoritism to my home state. No, oh, I ain't going to fault you for it. To be honest, I kind of wish there was a chapter out where I live, but I'm kind of stuck out in the boonies. There's no real road tracks here, so I don't blame them. <laughs> well, we're about to see them turn loose here once again on an extraordinary road circuit here. Of course, very historical when it comes to all things BMW. Of course, you have to go back into the early 90s, late 90s, early 2000s when BMW with their V12 prototype came and raced here for the Petit Le Mans or the uh, 10 hours at Road Atlanta. And of course, BMW with their M8 GTE have claimed victory here multiple times at Petit Le Mans. And also the M6 and Z4 GT cars that ran in previous years with the IMSA Sports Car Championship. So BMW has a wide historical value when it comes to sports car racing here. And they're going to continue that here tonight with the M4 GT4s as the pace truck is leading them up through turn 10A and 10B up underneath the Suzuki Bridge. And we're going to turn them loose here once again. Will the excitement continue? We are about to find out. The pace truck is now going to take that hard right turn down pit road, and we are getting ready to go green flag. Chris Hill will lead into the green, and we are underway for 20 minutes as Chris Braun is in second. Dave Hines now is able to get a good run for third, but Evan Levine now goes to the outside as they go into turn one. Who will be brave and make the nice, makes the best decision as they come out of turn one nice and clean, no contact just yet. Evan Levine now goes to the inside to take third position away from Dave Hines. We have ourselves a new driver inside the top three. Meanwhile, a little further back, everyone's trying to stay clean and green as one car goes off. That looks like to be the... Uh, I couldn't ca ca catch that number. That is the 73 of Dave Cole dropping back as he goes to turn the S's of turns three and four. We also saw another track, uh, another car go off track with Peter Eastman in the 488 uh, car, I believe. Uh, went a little bit off course after one of the S's, but uh, managed to regather it and get back on track. And uh, the drivers have now exited the brown zone where they're not allowed to make any aggressive passing maneuvers in the first lap. So now they are unleashing the leashes or un 
coloring the le You know what I mean. It's there. time to turn them loose. <laughs> it's time to turn them loose. <laughs> and certainly some of these drivers have already started to make some aggressive passes. Dave Cole looked to the inside of Charlie Copper in order to take that fourth position after him going off course through turn number three here at the start of the race. And then a little further up the road, we see Cameron Evans and Enrique Williams going side by side into turn 10. Evans takes 10th position away from Williams as they climb up through the hill right now. And still, that battle up towards the front of the field. Well, it's kind of picked it up where they last left off. The top six is lined up nose to tail as they come through turn number one after completing lap one here for the first time tonight. Uh, one thing you might be able to notice here as well is that Christopher Hill hasn't been able to get as clean a getaway as he did last time. Uh, through the first lap, into the first turn, Chris Braun was able to get himself a lane all on his own. No cars next to him, so he, was, he wasn't really necessarily slowed down by the presence of other cars. So now he's able to chase down Chris Hill with clean air, and he might be able to reach that slipstream if he just catches him by a couple tenths and be able to uh, really catch up to Chris Hill and give him a challenge. He is going to try and challenge as they come out of turn number six and seven now as they approach the long back straightaway. This is where he can utilize the slipstream in order to make up ground on Chris Hill. Chris Braun in that 17 starting to reel him in just a little bit. Seven tenths of a second separate the two drivers as they make their way through the long back straightaway through turn number nine, heading downhill, making the run to turn 10. Still, Christopher Hill holds that six tenths of a second lead, but it's starting to shrink just a little bit as they enter turn 10. And as they enter turn 10, we can see like a lot of, uh, like these drivers are very close together. They're just keeping an eye on things, you know, they don't, we probably don't want to make too many sudden movements all of a sudden, you know, just in the first couple of laps here, but they are within striking distance of each other. If they really want to challenge, if they really want to push, they absolutely can. And uh, some of these drivers may have decided to just wait a little bit, just sit tight, watch the driver ahead of them, maybe put a little bit of pressure on them, and then try and force them in a, mis a mistake to capitalize on. They certainly are, as the battle for third between Evan Levine and Dave Hines is also going strong right now. Evan Levine was able to capitalize and make the pass on lap number one in order to get that third position, and he's holding on quite strongly over Dave Hines in that 57 as they climb the curving out of turn number five down the short shoot towards turn six, and we see Dave Hines go to the outside of Evan Levine as they make their way into turn number six. Now the crossover as Rafael Espinal will try and try to capitalize on that as they come through turn seven. Coming out of turn seven, it seems Evan Levine still defending his position successfully with Dave Hines right behind him. But he has to make sure he's not losing too much time trying to challenge for that position because Rafael Espinal and then behind him is Adam Pohl. These drivers are all very good drivers. They can take the position if they really want to if uh, if Evan Levine or Dave Hines gives up too much, uh, too much time uh, trying to fight each other. A couple of other drivers who are now starting to get into the mix who weren't in the top 10 last time around. Kurt Poulter, Matt Kalish, Brooke Azell, and Enrique Williams. These three or these four drivers now are in a battle. And actually, if you go further back where Enrique Williams, Brooke Azell, and Cameron Evans are, they are all over each other as they come out of turn 11. As And it looks like Enrique Williams will hold on to that ninth position as he gets around Brooke Azell. And Cameron Evans now is stalking Brooks as they come into turn one. That was a fantastic driving maneuver there. Tried to get the pass done uh, through the turns 10A and 10B, and then going side by side up, uh, up the hill, and then down the hill again and into the final turn. Unable to make it really stick properly, but these drivers have been doing a fantastic job trying to get the passes done. You can definitely be certain that that isn't the last you've heard of Brooks Ezel and uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Cameron Evans. Well, Cameron Evans gets a great run out of turn number five. He's going to go to the inside of Brooks Azell as they go side by side into turn number six. Cameron Evans to the inside will complete the pass and once again back into the top ten here tonight for race number two as they come out of turn number seven down the long back straightaway. Meanwhile, up the front, the two Chris's. It's the Chris and Chris show here tonight at Road Atlanta. Seven tenths of a second is still the gap between the two drivers. As they oh, come there's out contact. There's contact between Rafael uh, Espinal and Evan Levine. It seemed as though uh, Rafael Espinal got into the back end of Evan Levine and spun him. I'm not sure if that was really intentional. I think it was just uh, getting a little too close to the car uh, beside them. There is more than likely going to be a penalty issued here for that. 
yes, as Rafael Espinal has been given the black flag, he's going to have to go to the pits to serve that penalty. That was really unfortunate, yet you really hate to see it. You really do indeed, as also another penalty was given out to the 73 of Dave Cole. We do not know what the reason was for that penalty, but we will let you know as soon as we find out more information. But for Evan Levine, that BMW M4 GT4, well, it's hurting right now. It's dropping all the way back to about 13th, about to be 14th position as t both Matthew Kogan and Tyler Perry are working their way around him. You know, man, these drivers are trying to push their cars to their limits. You hate to see them wreck each other. Uh, but, you know, as it, is, as it is with racing, there's always an element of danger, an element of risk with it. You're driving these cars at obnoxiously fast speeds. So uh, having these little incidents happen is just kind of almost an inevitability. And the fact that it doesn't happen every lap is just an attest it's just a testament to the skill of these drivers and it's no surprise either these drivers also drive in real life they are actual members of the bmw uh car club of america so of course they're going to have that uh have that uh, experience of racecraft behind them of course as we see rafael espinal make his way down pit road to serve his penalty but yes all these drivers are not only sim racers, but also club racers. So they will travel to a wide variety of circuits, such as this one here, to club race with each other and enjoy the all things BMW here. As they continue on their way here, we are now six laps completed or 12 minutes left to go on the clock as they work their way up through the S's. Chris Hill is not be able to pull away quite at all. He has a four tenths of a second gap and it is closing between him and Chris Braun as Chris Braun is closing that gap and they're actually approaching some lap traffic up in front of him right now which actually turns out to be the 73 of Dave Cole who is currently one lap down. As I mentioned before the start of this race, you know, um, last event, Chris Braun was tracking down Chris Hill, and it seems as though the drivers have just turned the lights on in the feature race. Chris Hill has not been able to get as clean a getaway as he might have liked, and it's now entirely possible that uh, Chris Braun behind him might be able to challenge for the lead before this race is over. But also behind them is Dave Hines in the 57 car, that green BMW there. He also is within earshot of uh, taking advantage of that battle that might be developing in front of him. As you battle, you're going to be losing more time. So it's entirely possible that he could be well within earshot of first place as well. He certainly was. In fact, Dave Hines' last lap, not this current lap, was the fastest car on the racetrack. He ran a 126.23, and this time around, he is about uh, the fourth fastest car on the racetrack with a 126.92. Fastest car currently out on the track is Kurt Poulter on a 126.62. As you see, Dave Cole go off course, take the escape road to stay out of the way of the top three as they work their way down the S's up through turn number five. As we are approaching the halfway point here in tonight's race, 10 minutes, 39 seconds left to go on the clock. So it is going to be a tight battle between the two Chris's. And if Dave Hines is able to find a little bit extra speed, we could see a three-car battle for the race lead here before tonight's over with. Absolutely true, and you would love to see it. We saw a lot of battles happening uh, further down the pack, of course, but uh, between the top three, you know, the podium finish is uh, really quite important to these drivers, you know, not just for bragging rights, but for also uh, for, well, yeah, for bragging rights, but for also uh, just having the ability to uh, gauge yourself against your other drivers and gauge your skill against other drivers, especially under pressure, because as that timer clicks down, you're going to have less opportunities to be able to make the passes that you need to do and make up the time in order to make those passes work and to make them stick. As the time continues to click down, we are approaching the final few minutes here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta as we still watch well, we the battle for the race. Grass. Car goes car off on the grass there. Uh, Matt Kalish was going off in the grass just after uh, the final corner down. Uh, the start-finish line. He's just behind. Uh, he's being followed by uh, yeah. He's followed by Adam Pohl and is uh, was just behind Kurt Poulter, but has now lost quite a bit of time behind him. Uh, they're gonna have to try and uh, catch back up and see if they could chase uh, Kurt Poulter down for that fourth position. 
Meanwhile, back up front in the front of the field right now, Chris Braun has almost got it down to about two points of two tenths of a second at one point. Now it's stretched out to about six tenths of a second. But Chris Braun, he is there on top of Chris Hill in order to try and make a shot of passing for the race lead. Meanwhile, Dave Hines has closed his gap down to about eight tenths of a second behind Chris Braun. So that three car battle of the race lead starting to heat up just a little bit more now as they come out of turn number nine down straight away through here before they head downhill into turn number 10 and as they work their way through turn 10 still dave hines with the fastest car last lap with 126.57 we'll see who was the fastest this time around as they come underneath the suzuki bridge out of turn 11 and 12 as chris hill still holds on by about seven tenths of a second looking at your top three right now dave hines fastest car on the track with a 126.46 Five. He is flying out there on the racetrack as Chris Hill is going a little bit too wide right there to turn one. And then as we look further back down in the pack, we're seeing Rafael Espinal fighting with who I believe to be was, oh, I saw it on the on the clicker there, Cameron Evans. Uh, Cameron Evans, of course, able to pull away a little bit after that uh, attempt at an overtaking maneuver. And... Um, we're going to have to see, like, with Rafael Espinal sitting in the top 10 position, if he's able to fight through the field and make it up into the top five. We've seen him do it before. Can he do it again? We'll have to see throughout the rest of this race. Remember, Rafael Espinal recovering from a penalty that he had to serve after making contact with Evan Levine early on in today's race here. And Evan Levine, he's currently sitting in 19th, two laps down. So a tough break for him. And currently, one car is out of tonight's race. That is the Triple Eight of Jim Anderson, who has decided to take it behind the wall. His day is done. Meanwhile, back up front to your race lead. Chris Hill, Chris Braun, Dave Hines, your top three right now as they come out of turn number 11 through turn number 12. They will go six minutes, 6.5 minutes left to go on the clock as they cross the start finish line. It is still going to be Dave Hines, your fastest car on the racetrack with a 126.757. He is definitely putting the pressure on our top two right now as they come up to turn number three. And now we will see, can Dave Hines get around the two Chris's? It's entirely possible here. Dave Hines has been consistently the fastest driver on track. Uh, when we first started talking about Dave Hines having the opportunity to catch the leaders of this race, he was something like more than a second back, more than a second and a half back behind Chris Hill. As he goes for a move, he's going for a move on Chris Braun on the outside, Chris Braun on the inside. They're going to try and make it stick, but Chris Braun is able to defend the position on the inside. And, he, and here they are coming out of turn seven onto the back straight. Will Dave Hines make another move going into 10A and 10B? We will find out if they had slight contact in the middle of turns five, but are able to keep it straight and continue going here. Here comes the slipstream from Dave Hines in order to try to make the pass complete. Here, Chris Braun, will he defend? He's gonna defend the inside line. Dave Hines will go to the outside through 10A, but have the inside advantage through 10B as they try the crossover move. Cup through 10B, they will go as Chris Hill sees these two battling. This gives the chance for him to pull away a little bit. He's picked it up to about 1.3 seconds. Now, this is the exact scenario that Chris Hill wanted in his mirror. He absolutely wanted these two drivers to battle so that he can run away with a lead like he did in the previous race. And that is exactly where he prospers. As soon as he gets people out of his mirror, he is lighting his tires on fire and getting out of Dodge. As we see Chris Braun and Dave Hines still fighting with each other, they're still within striking distance. Dave Hines looking at the back of Chris Braun's BMW GT4, thinking what in the the world do I have to do to get past this man? He is trying every which way as they come out of turn five. You see both drivers going over the curve, getting a little bit loose right there. And here comes Dave Hines to the inside. Chris Braun throws Ooh. the block, almost tried to make it stick. Contact oh, no. is made, but they still keep it straight. Dave Hines will try to take second place, but Chris Braun to the inside. More contact. contact. Both the cars spin, spin out. And meanwhile, Meanwhile, Kurt Poulter, Matt Kalish, they will get around and move up to second and third. Adam Pohl moves up to P4. And Chris Braun and Dave Hines, well, they're currently moving the grass all out of turn number seven to continue on their way. Dave Hines gets back on the track. Chris Braun it continues on his way. We'll have to wait for here from race control who will receive that penalty. But not much time is left on the clock right now. And Christopher Hill, 
Well, he's grinning from ear to ear right now. Four minutes left to go, and he has about a 5.5 second lead. I'd really like to see the replay on that because that was intense battling from the two of them, but it seems as though, uh, from what I can remember of what happened there, it seems like Chris Braun was just going a little bit too shallow, going a little bit too hot into the corner, uh, got into the side of Dave Hines, and unfortunately that resulted in that uh, contact there. But uh, as we head back up to the fields, watching Chris, Hi uh, Chris Hill soccer, uh, Chris Hill uh, doing his lap times, you know, he's got clean air behind him, nothing in his mirror. As I said before, this is the exact scenario he wanted. This is where he's best, and he is going to remain consistent. That is his one goal. Stay on the track, reduce mistakes. He doesn't want to overdrive the car and then risk other drivers catching up. You know what, Strix? I, too, want to take a look at that replay. And with three minutes left to go, let's take a look quickly at that replay that happened between those two drivers of Chris Braun and Dave Hines. As we see the replay right here, those two are actually still battling for position on track. But you will see as they come out of turn five, they get a little bit loose. And then once they work their way up, you will see, looks like Chris Braun will take a peek to the inside. This is a little bit late earlier. This is through turn 10A, 10B, where they would try to cross over move. So this should be this lap where we should see the contact. Yeah, the it was a little bit earlier after the S's there that we saw the contact. That was the move made earlier. Um, hopefully this is the uh, portion of the race here where we can... Uh... Sorry, we're trying to uh, find out. There it is, right there. there. There's the contact we saw as both cars go around. And it started off when we saw Chris Braun get a little bit loose off turn five. Dave Hines will look to the inside. And we saw the big block that Braun tried to put on Hines, but Braun was able to get away. Then more contact between the two drivers out of turn number six. And then as they dive it into turn seven, it looked like that they just try to put two cars in one spot and neither one of them fit. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. It seemed uh, Chris Braun uh, was going a little bit too hot in the corner. And then on the other side of things, um, and Dave Hines, you know, uh, I think he might have given him just enough room to fit there. And it seems as though the stewards of the race uh, agree with that, uh, with that perception because Chris Braun was the driver who was uh, awarded the penalty. So he'll have to go to the pits and uh, serve a stop and go for that. Certainly. It's unfortunate, it's unfortunate, but uh, that's kind of the nature of racing with this, uh, when you're going at these speeds in these heavy cars like the BMW GT4. It is, unfortunately, that is the case. Meanwhile, Christopher Hill, it looks like this will be the white flag lap for the number one, who currently started P1 in race one, finished race one in P1. He started P1 in race two, and by the looks of it, with a 5.8 second lead over Kurt Poulter, he will end up finishing in P1 as he comes out of the S's once again for the final time. Kurt Poulter, Adam Pohl, they're trying everything that they can to catch up, but it's going to be too little too late. Dave Hines, Matt Kalish, they are pretty much separating themselves pretty well as the rest of the field pretty much is pretty quiet for the most part. No major battles. Except for the battle for 15th between Jakob Bilak and Charlie Copper. Those two are battling for 15th and 16th. So a good show for them as they try to finish out the last lap for them. As Chris Hill will come out of turn number seven for the final time. Heading down the long back straightaway. He's just got to get through turns 9, 10, 11, and 12. And he will have swept the night. We can't, like, I can't say I'm really surprised, though. Uh, Christopher Hill had uh, a bit of a threat to his position, a bit of a threat to his throne, if you will, uh, from Chris Braun, but that unfortunate contact between uh, him and Chris, uh, and, uh, sorry, Dave Hines, kind of put a dash on all of that. They started fighting with each, with each other, trying to get to second, and Christopher Hill started inching away. And now, as he goes through the final turn, Christopher Hill is your winner for the feature race in the BMW Car Club of America iRacing Series. He certainly will win tonight's race and sweep the night once again. Meanwhile, we will wait for the rest of the field to come through to complete their lap here. Right now, the closest battle, Chris Braun having to serve his penalty, so we won't mention him because he has, will be penalized for that position, so I don't think he will be finishing in there. 
Meanwhile, looking throughout the field, I think the closest battle has to go to Charlie Copper and Jakob Bielek. And those two, we'll keep an eye on them, watch those two battle it out as they come out of turn number six through turn seven. And this is the closest battle we have on track as everyone is separating themselves quite well. And we'll watch these two battle it out as they go down the back straight for the final time. Charlie Copper try to close into the back buffer of Jakob Bielek to try and get 15th position as they go down the back straightaway. Here comes Copper. He's going to look to the inside as they go down the back straightaway, heading to turn number 10. And Charlie Copper will complete the pass before they get to turn 10A. Jakob Bielek will be able to slot back into 16th through turn 10A. 10B for the final time for these two drivers. They'll climb up the hill underneath the Suzuki Bridge. And Charlie Copper will take home 15th as the rest of the field comes through to finish off the lap. We will then soon give you your full field rundown. You know, this race was fantastic to watch. It was very eventful. We saw a lot of drivers doing their absolute best to try and make it to the top of the field. And what we saw here was um, between Dave Hines and Chris Braun and early on in the race was we saw drivers maybe getting a little bit too comfortable with each other uh, and not giving each other enough space to make these passes work. We saw quite a few penalties issued this time around. Um, but I think the important thing to note is that the brown zone rule is working. Uh, on the first lap throughout the first few turns, we're seeing a lot of very safe driving, very conservative driving. We might be seeing a few passes here and there, but they're not super aggressive passes like you would see later on in the race. And, you know, I'm going to keep mentioning that rule because I think it's a really smart rule to implement into all of your uh, racing, whether it's IRL, like in real life, or if it's in sim racing. It certainly is. And with that, we are going to give you our sim racing results here tonight. Christopher Hill from the San Diego chapter will be your race winner. He'll sweep the night, followed by Kurt Colt Poulter from the Buckeye chapter. Adam Pohl from the Trillium chapter will take home the third position as he will round out your podium, followed by Dave Hines from the Allegheny chapter in fourth. Matt Kalish will come home in the fifth position from the New York chapter with Enrique Williams from the Tar Heel chapter in sixth position. Ismael Sierra from the New York chapter will come home in seventh with Rafael Espinal from the Boston chapter. He'll come home eighth. Ninth goes to Ta Cameron Evans for the Tejas chapter and rounding out your top 10, Chris Braun from the Boston chapter. And then in your 11th position, finishing in the feature race is Brooks Ezel from the Tar Heel chapter in the in the 77 car. And then behind him in the 28 car in 12th position, Tyler Perry from the Roadrunner chapter. Behind him is Peter Eastman from the New Jersey chapter in 13th. In 14th, Matthew Kogan from the San Diego chapter. In 15th was Charlie Copper from the Buckeye chapter. Yakov Bielek from the Trillium chapter, a chapter ended up in 16th. 17th goes to Paul Wigboldy from the Los Angeles chapter. Dave Cole gets the 18th position. He is from the Bluegrass Bimmers chapter. Evan Levine finishes out uh, with the Tar Heel chapter in 19th. And then finishing 20th, rounding out your 20 car field, Jim Anderson from the Trillium chapter. And with that, we are going to bring up our race winner into the booth tonight, Christopher Hill. Chris. You won, you swept the night here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. How do you feel? Ah, not too bad, you know? I was able to somehow get lucky and finish up towards the front there a couple of times, so can't feel too bad about that, you know? <laughs> no, I mean, the first race you absolutely dominated, was able to pull away by almost 10 seconds. The second race towards the first half and middle of the race, you had a little bit of a challenge from Chris Braun as he was so close, but then of course had a mistake towards the end of the race that allowed you to pull away. Did you feel any concerns with from Chris Braun and Dave Hines? Oh, for sure. I mean, I felt like the, the first race, a lot of the gap was, I could see they were close together and I think they were battling each other for most of the race is my guess. And so I had a hunch that they had the pace because I mean, throughout all the practice that we've done throughout the, you know, the week and all that kind of stuff, I definitely wasn't top of the time charts, you know, I was, I was doing all right and, and, uh, but not really confidently there. And so I, I felt like, you know, I felt like in race two, it was going to be a lot closer and it, and it was until just the right, you know, the right opportunity happened there, the right mistake or, or whatever happened. I didn't quite see it, but, um, all of a sudden it started to get a, a little bit of a gap and <laughs> I guess that's all it took. So. 
Certainly it is. Well, next week we head north to Watkins Glen. How confident do you feel about battle racing there? You know, I haven't actually played on that track too much. Uh, I've done a little bit here and there, and I, I seem to do okay there, but I don't know. It's not one that I've done a bunch of races on. Um, I guess we'll see how, if I dial in or not, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, before we let you go, Chris, who would you like to say thank you to? Uh, well, just thanks to the guys putting on an awesome, awesome series here. Uh, thanks to you guys for, for, for showing it. It's awesome to be able to share it with friends and family and all that kind of stuff. Uh, of course, I always have to thank the wife for all her support and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, definitely uh, you know, shout out to uh, all my coworkers at the Performance Center there uh, for all their all their support on this too. Here, they uh, they always are rooting me on to <laughs> go out and have some fun too. So. Uh, all right. Well, that is Christopher Hill, your race winner here tonight in that number one BMW. And Strix has caught up with our second place driver, Kurt Poulter. Kurt Poulter, that was a fantastic race to watch there. Um, unfortunately, uh, we saw a couple drivers um, run into each other in the top two and three, and you were able to capitalize. Uh, tell me, do you feel as though, um, you know, do you feel as though it's important for a driver to stay consistent so you can take uh, ad exam uh, take sorry take advantage of those uh, sorts of situations? Like, what's your what's your mindset yeah. when you see that kind of battle happen? Yeah, I mean, 100. percent It's unfortunate that it happened. Number one, but you know, I've uh, had a rough couple weeks myself um, and being taken out of races, so I definitely know the feeling. Um, you know, it's unfortunate when it happens, but, you know, for me, consistency is kind of the key and trying to have a, you know, quick pace, but stay consistent throughout the whole race and try to minimize, you know, the, the tire dag as much as you can uh, and be there to capitalize when something like that happens. Now, um, earlier on in the race, um, you know, a lot of drivers were ending up going a little bit wide uh, down through, uh, I believe, turn five that uh, where you come down out of the downhill and then go left. And then there's turn six and seven, and you go on the back straight. Turn five uh, seems to be quite a difficult corner. What is your mindset when you're going into that corner? Like, do you want to attack the curb? Do you want to stay off it? Uh, what kind of go-tos do you have for strategies going in through that difficult corner? Uh, I, I actually love that place. I feel like I make up a lot of time on other drivers there. Um, I attack it extremely hard. Um, I pretty much dip my left wheel almost into the grass uh, up over that curb. And uh, as long as you don't bounce too much off the curb on the right uh, and the car is settled by the time you're turning in, uh, you can really make up some time getting up that hill, um, you know, and get a nice little run down the little short chute. Yeah, it seemed like just on the replay I was seeing on the broadcast, uh, on the broadcast video, you could see the car bouncing really hard off that curb. You're really attacking that. Uh, yeah. Finally, uh, before I let you go, are there any uh, people you want to thank or people you want to shout out? Uh, oh, of course. For tonight. Yeah, um, Turning Concepts, Obsessed Garage, Heel and Toe Apparel, uh, Enthusiast Auto Group, Vandalia Range and Army, uh, Evolve Range Solutions. All those guys are uh, great sponsors and uh, you know it's nice to have them on the car and a uh, big thank you to BMW CCA and club racing to let us do this you know in the, in the sim world it's a lot of fun all right congratulations on your thank second you. place finish in the feature race and hopefully we'll see you next time at the Glen you got it thanks guys and now finally we have in p3 adam pole taylor burris you have a conversation with him this time i certainly do adam pole coming home in p3 here tonight adam a great run for you in both races as you were battling it out here and tell us about how your race went overall for the night uh pretty good i just uh tried to keep it clean and not make any mistakes i made a few here and there but uh yeah, I just kept my nose clean and ended up in the podium. It certainly was. How difficult was it running here at Road Atlanta for you? Uh, it's a fun track. It's just a really hard track to hit all your marks every lap. Uh, it's so easy to just go a little deep and, and lose a bunch of time or, or you're off the track. And yeah, but it's it's fun. It certainly is. Now, next week we head north to Watkins Glen. How confident do you feel about racing at that track? 
Uh, I need a little, I need a little practice between now and then, but should be fun. I'll, I'll aim for my, you know, normal fifth, sixth place finish, but you never know what's going to happen in front of you. So true indeed tonight. So, well, before we let you go, Adam, is there anyone you'd like to say thank you to? Uh, I'd just like to thank the, the BMW Car Club and Club Racing uh, for, for organizing this and putting it on. Of course, and that is Adam Pohl coming home in P3 here tonight. And with that, it is time to give our final thoughts. And Strix, I'll let you go ahead and give your final thoughts for tonight. You know, tonight's racing was incredibly exciting. Not only did I feel more comfortable in my role as a commentator, but it was also easier to be a commentator in this race because there was always something going on on track. And the design of Road Atlanta really lends itself to that exciting racing experience. Um, you know, we saw a lot of drivers, um, as Adam Pohl mentioned, you know, missing their marks sometimes here and there because this track is very unforgiving. We even saw a three wide moment in turn one. Any one of those drivers could have made that moment their slip up moment and wrecked those three drivers completely, but that didn't happen. These drivers know where to put their nose when it counts and they're able to get it done cleanly. This was a fantastic exhibition in BMW CCA's um, wide margin of skill and just how many people are really uh, in tune with their cars. And I'm, I gotta say, I'm really excited to see what happens at Watkins Glen next time. And of course, you can catch all the BMW Car Club America iRacing Series racing action next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at the hallowed grounds of Watkins Glen International. We're running the full boot configuration, so it's going to be high speeds. It's going to be fast. It's going to be exciting. You can catch all of the action once again on the BMW Car Club of America's Facebook and YouTube channels, and of course on twitch.tv slash bearded sim racer, and of course all other streaming platforms. Once again, we cannot say thank you enough to the following partners here for the BMW Club Car Club of America iRacing Series, and they are brought to you by TireRack.com. Over 2.7 million square feet of distribution centers, 27 major tire brands, and 60 wheel brands. Most available to deliver by next business day. Competitive, competitive pricing, industry trusted reviews, and extensive customer service. TireRack.com, America's leading performance tire and wheel source. We'd also like to thank Bimmer World, FCP Euro, Grassroots Motorsports. HMS Motorsports, Motion Control Suspension, Off Camber Autosports, PFC Brakes, Red Line Synthetic Oil, Sunoco, and finally, VAC Motorsports. And with that, it is time for us to come to a close. For James Pike, Gary Sexton, Cisco Scarmuza, and John Theodore at Podium Esports. For my partner in the booth, Strix Pulsatrix, and our producer over there in the top flight computer production booth, Ryan Bauer. I'm Taylor Perez out to Podium Esports. Thank you so much for watching tonight's broadcast, and we say goodnight from Road Atlanta.